In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is born. Merry Christmas. If you have an empty seat next to you, this place is full. Beloved, I'll ask you a strange question to ask you on Christmas. Do you remember when Moses and Joshua fought Amalek? Okay. There's lots of yeses and lots of noes. I can see it in your eyes. In the book of Exodus, God remains faithful to his people. He feeds them. He gives them drink. He defends them from those who hate God. Many of these miracles performed by God were done by Moses as he held the wooden staff through which God chose to show his mighty works. In chapter 17 of Exodus, the people of God were grumbling against God and against Moses, as they most frequently do. They were thirsty, and they asked God to save them. Rather, they asked why God would save them from Egypt, just so that they would die of thirst in the desert. So Moses struck a rock with the staff of God, and from it flowed water for God's people. But material sustenance was not all that God's people needed to survive. As Israel roamed the land, they were surrounded by God's enemies. They were surrounded by those who hate the one true God, who is the creator of heaven and earth. And they worshiped instead the vile gods who stood in rebellion. These vile gods of the Gentiles often sought to destroy God's people. And so they did for the first time in Exodus chapter 17. Here in Exodus chapter 17, while Israel was in Rephidim, they were attacked by a hostile tribe, a hostile nation, subject to hostile gods. Amalek, that wicked king, and the Amalekites, his wicked people, attacked God's people. And upon being attacked, Moses told Joshua to choose some men to go and fight Amalek. But it was not Moses or Joshua who waged war against Amalek, but God himself. Moses climbed a mountain with the staff which, through which God performs his wonders. And raising the staff above his head and above God's people, with his arms stretched out, God waged war against Amalek with his invisible hand. As long as Moses stood on that hill and held that sacred tree above God's people and held his arms high, And outstretched, Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and slaughtered his people with the sword. After God drove off Amalek for the first time, God told Moses to write down the story and to build an altar so that God's people might remember. When God tells his people to remember something, dear ones, we would be wise to remember. And what is it that God told his people to remember? It is this, that God will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven, and that God will wage war against Amalek with an unseen hand through all generations. Christ's birth is, as the fathers of the church teach us, a mysterious but emphatic declaration that our God indeed has waged war with his hidden hand throughout all generations. For today, God's right hand, the one who will finally wield the staff of Moses against every hostile power, is born a humble king. As Isaiah the prophet said of our humble king, Before the boy knows how to cry out to his mother or father, he will take back all that belongs to him from that wicked king. And so it is. Christ is born. When Isaiah the prophet was told of 
was told of the son who was to be born. He also lived in a land surrounded by those who did not love God. Of the people who surrounded him, he said this, they will pass through the land greatly distressed and hungry. And when they are hungry, they will be enraged and will speak contemptuously against their king and their God and turn their faces upward. And they will look to the earth, but behold distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish. And they will be thrust in the thick darkness. But the Lord spoke to Isaiah and warned him not to walk in the way of these people who surrounded him. So let the world be broken. Be broken, you peoples, and be shattered. Give ear, all you far countries. Strap on your armor and be shattered. Strap on your armor and be shattered, so says God to the prophet Isaiah. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. But the Lord our God, he it is whom we will ascribe holiness, and him we will fear. And I will put my trust in him, he shall be my sanctification. I will set my hope on him, and through him I shall be saved. Lo, I and the children whom God has given me. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, to him hath, on them hath that light shined. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a child is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and of his peace there, there shall be no end. And his name shall be called the Angel of Great Counsel, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the highest power, the Prince of Peace, the Father of the world to come. Be at peace, dear, dear ones, for God is with us. Christ is born. Lord, Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.